Are you brand new to sewing and feeling overwhelmed? Are you looking at your machine and wondering which stitch do I use? What foot? Then here's the tutorial for you to cover off the basics. Let's start with stitching. It's easy to get overwhelmed when you sit down to your machine and there are seemingly hundreds of stitches that you can choose from. Let's shout that, shall we? Ah, that's better. To be honest, you really only need two stitches when you're starting out, a straight stitch and a zigzag stitch. Let's talk about what they can do, when to use them and some variations. The straight stitch, aka the basic stitch of all stitches. This is the stitch to be used on non-stretch fabrics like cotton, silk, broadcloth, poplin. Basically, if you pull the fabric and it doesn't really stretch. It is great for seams, hems, understitching, basically anything that involves putting two or more pieces of fabric together. But the straight stitch can also be used as a basting or gathering stitch. To do this, set your stitch length to be as long as it possibly can be. Basting is the process of adding a temporary stitch to hold fabric in place whilst you work around it, usually for things like pleats. You can also use it as a gathering stitch to create little ruffles or to ease in things like sleeves. Just don't backstitch or knot both ends as you will need to pull on the thread to gather it. If you want to see more ruffling techniques, I have another video all about that. I'll link it in the description. Finally, don't forget that you can use a straight stitch to create a wonderful finish through top stitching. The zigzag stitch. The second of our basic stitches is the amazing and versatile zigzag stitch. This is the stitch to use when sewing stretch fabrics like lycra, scuba knit or jersey. That is because the stitches have some space between them and can handle some of the movement and pull from stretch fabrics. If you try to use a straight stitch on a stretch fabric, when tension is applied, like someone pulling it, the thread will break. Zigzag stitching can also be used as a way to bound non-stretch fabric edges, like cotton, to help them stop from fraying. This is a great option for those who don't have an overlocker. And finally, did you know that zigzag stitching can be beautiful? If you shorten the spacing between the stitches so it's almost sewing over itself, you can create a very lovely satin stitch, which is a nice way to add some detail. Okay, so with the stitching unraveled, are you ready to learn about some of the feet? No, don't get overwhelmed now. You are doing so well. Let's make it simple and get rid of most of these. These five that are remaining are what I consider to be basic feet and some extra useful feet as well. Let's start off with the standard foot. This is the foot that every machine has. It's good for your regular stitching, either straight or zigzag. Whether it be hemming, seaming, top stitching, under stitching, this foot can generally do it all. The satin stitch foot. This is very similar to your regular foot, except down the middle is a groove. This is designed to allow you to do satin stitching and the foot to move freely over the stitching. The zipper foot. This thin bean is good for when you are needing to sew up close to something, like a zipper, like the name suggests, or if you're adding piping to a seam. The rolled hem foot. This little beauty is absolutely fabulous for creating very narrow hems. Very neat and easy to use. It just takes a little bit of practice, but once you get the hang of it, well, it is one of my favorite ways to create hems. And lastly, this bad boy, the buttonhole foot. This is a fun one if your sewing machine has a buttonhole setting you can use. Usually, you just set the button size, clip the foot in, click down the buttonhole lever, and choose the buttonhole setting for the stitching, and then go. Once you're done, use some scissors or a seam ripper to open the buttonhole carefully. You'll see that I've also added some pins to the ends to ensure that as I cut open the fabric, I don't go past the ending and then cut the thread. And there you go. I hope that you've enjoyed that and it makes starting sewing a little less daunting. For more tutorials, please subscribe to my channel and as always, happy sewing.